My name is Carolyn Pearson and I'm a hydrologic engineer for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Risk Management Center. Have you been wanting to learn how to perform a reservoir stage frequency analysis for a PA or an SQRA level dam safety risk assessment? Well, you're in luck. In this lecture, I'm going to introduce you to the Risk Management Center's Reservoir Frequency Analysis Software, also known as RMCRFA. And I'm going to give you a quick breakdown of the statistical framework that is working behind the scenes. In this module, we will discuss the basic framework of a stochastic simulation. Describe two kinds of uncertainty. Review Monte Carlo methodology. Define RMCRFA simulation framework. RMCRFA software is an inflow volume based stochastic simulation framework developed by Hayden Smith from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Risk Management Center. The procedures outlined in these videos are based on the Risk Management Center guidance document, RMCTR 2018-03 titled An Inflow Volume Based Approach to Estimating Stage Frequency for Dams. Both the RFA software and the guidance document can be found at the RMC website, shown here. Before we get started, I'll go over the basic framework of a stochastic simulation used to develop a stage frequency curve. There are really only two options. First, there is the precipitation-based approach. In this method, we would sample precipitation volumes from a precipitation frequency curve, scale the sampled precipitation depth to an observed storm shape, and distribute the precipitation over a rainfall runoff model, such as HEC HMS. The results of this modeling are an inflow hydrograph, click, which we route through a reservoir routing model to obtain, click, a peak stage. Because all of the inputs are uncertain, we would use multiple storm patterns, multiple possible inflow hydrograph shapes, variations in the hydrologic basin parameters such as loss rates, and variations in reservoir operations. This procedure would be repeated many, many times to create a series of peak stages that define the reservoir stage frequency curve. This method can be very computationally intensive. The second approach is the inflow volume based approach. In this method, we would sample inflow volumes from a volume frequency curve. The inflow volume is used to scale an inflow hydrograph shape. The scaled hydrograph is routed through a reservoir model, which is repeated many times to create a series of peak stages that define the reservoir stage frequency curve. As in the precipitation based approach, the inputs have uncertainty that must be accounted with variation of the input parameters. This method is much simpler and easier to perform than the precipitation-based approach. This is the approach used in RMC-RFA. There are two main types of uncertainty that affect the study of hydrologic hazard. The first is natural variability, or aleatory uncertainty, and the second is knowledge uncertainty, or epistemic uncertainty. Natural variability describes the randomness of natural processes, such as fluctuations in precipitation, or temperature. It is important to understand that while we cannot reduce uncertainty from natural variability, we can understand it. The second type of uncertainty, knowledge uncertainty, describes our lack of knowledge and lack of data. Knowledge uncertainty can be reduced with further study and measurement. For example, in the plot on the left we can see the natural variability of inflow volume over time. We can't reduce the amount of variability we see in inflow volume but we can understand it. Examples of knowledge uncertainty can encompass things like how accurate our hydrologic model is at predicting flood events, whether a truly major flood has occurred in our watershed, how closely a gauge was able to measure the true flow or precipitation value, or how much gauge data we have available. These are examples of knowledge uncertainty, which can be reduced with further study and measurement. Let's look at one more example of the two types of uncertainty accounted for in RFA.
The user-defined volume frequency curve used in RFA describes the natural variability of inflow volumes. The confidence interval or uncertainty bounds describe the knowledge uncertainty in a frequency curve. Before we move on, I want to define how uncertainty is represented in the plots we use. For example, the flow frequency curves we use in RFA display a user input curve, the black curve, and confidence interval, shaded in blue. In statistical terms, we think the black user input curve is the likely distribution to represent the population of inflow volumes. However, there is a 90% chance the population, or parent distribution, could truly reside anywhere within these shaded bounds, and a 10% chance the parent distribution could be outside of these bounds. So how do we actually address uncertainty? A common way to combine uncertainty is with something called a Monte Carlo simulation. I know Monte Carlo sounds really exotic and maybe even a little frightening, so you are probably thinking it must be complicated. But it really is pretty simple. The key idea is that Monte Carlo techniques are used to combine uncertainty. We have uncertainty in each of our many inputs, including the volume frequency curves, the starting stage of our reservoir, the hydrograph shape, etc. Monte Carlo techniques allow us to combine these uncertainties so we can in turn quantify the uncertainty in our output stage frequency curve. In this presentation, I will break down the process of a Monte Carlo analysis and the basics of developing a stage frequency hazard curve using RMC RFA. The examples provided in this lecture are primarily geared towards developing stage frequency hazard curves for periodic assessments and semi-quantitative risk assessments, however, RMC RFA may have many other applications. In order to construct uncertainty bounds for reservoir stage frequency estimates, RFA employs a two-looped, nested Monte Carlo framework. This strategy of having two loops allows us to separate the natural and knowledge uncertainty so we can calculate and portray the magnitude of the uncertainty. This allows us to decide on investments, such as whether we want to invest in reducing the knowledge uncertainty to get a better decision. The outer loop consists of many realizations and simulates the knowledge uncertainty in the inflow volume frequency distribution. The inner loop addresses the natural variability of the reservoir stage by simulating many thousands of flood events. Instead of using fixed values, RMC RFA treats four variables as random variables with random sources of uncertainty, including the seasonal occurrence of the flood event, the antecedent reservoir stage, inflow volume, and the inflow flood hydrograph shape. In the next several slides, I will go through each step of the two loop simulation process. In an RFA simulation, the outer loop is run once per realization. RFA begins with the user input volume frequency curve, shown in black. This user input curve is bootstrapped, which means taking n random samples from the inflow volume distribution, the black curve, and fitting a new sample frequency curve to the random samples. In RFA, the effective record length of the frequency curve is used to determine the number of samples n, needed from the black inflow volume curve for the bootstrap. For example, if the effective record length for your observed inflow data is 75 years, RFA will randomly sample 75 values from the volume frequency curve. These 75 randomly sampled inflow volume measurements are used to calculate a mean, standard deviation, and skew for the sample. The new mean, standard deviation, and skew parameters define the sample inflow volume frequency curve, shown in red. In the outer loop of an RFA simulation, a new, red, sample inflow volume frequency curve is generated for each of the realizations selected in the RFA model, whether you chose 100 realizations or 10,000 realizations. This process simulates knowledge uncertainty in the inflow volume distribution. The inner loop procedure simulates natural variability uncertainty in flood events. For each of those new, bootstrapped inflow volume frequency curves developed in the outer loop, an inner loop realization is run. The inner loop includes four steps. Use stratified sampling to get 10,000 inflows. For each sample, randomly sample other hydrologic variables including the starting month, starting reservoir stage, and inflow hydrograph shape. Scale the inflow hydrograph to the sample volume and simulate reservoir routing to compute a peak stage for each inflow. Dot calculate the probability of the stages using the total probability theorem. When sampling inflow volumes in the inner loop, RFA uses an importance and stratified sampling approach. In practical terms, for each new red inflow volume frequency curve, click 
50 evenly spaced spins are applied along the probability axis. Then, 200 inflows are sampled from each bin. Lastly, each of the 10,000 flow volumes sampled are used to perform a reservoir routing simulation to produce a peak stage. The 10,000 peak stages are then sorted and ranked and one possible stage frequency curve is generated. The stage frequency curves from all of the realizations are used to compute the confidence intervals. This approach allows for fast computing and provides well-defined curves in the less frequent end of the probability scale. Now I will introduce the basic procedure involved in an RMCRFA stochastic simulation with an example of a single instance of the inner loop. First, one of the red inflow volume frequency curves developed in the outer loop is, click, sampled using importance and stratified sampling procedures. For this example, click, the inflow volume sampled is 375,000 CFS. Next, the starting month is randomly selected. Starting month sampling is based on the relative frequency of storms determined from the observed period of record inflow data. In this example, the starting month of May was selected. Next, a starting stage is randomly selected for the reservoir from the stage duration curve corresponding to the starting month selected. Stage duration curves are developed for each month from the period of record stage data. In this example, a starting stage of 724.4 feet is selected from the May stage duration curve. The last step of the inner loop is to randomly select the inflow hydrograph shape. RFA allows the user to input as many hydrograph shapes as desired. The user assigns a weight to each hydrograph which determines the relative frequency that each hydrograph will be stochastically sampled during a given simulation. In this example, six hydrograph shapes were input by the user, including observed hydrograph shapes and the PMF hydrograph shape. Using engineering judgment, each of these six hydrographs was thought to be equally likely, and were each given a weight of one. In this example, hydrograph shape number five was randomly selected. This hydrograph will now be scaled to the inflow volume sampled in step number one. After the inflow volume, starting month, starting reservoir stage, and inflow hydrograph shape are randomly sampled. And the inflow hydrograph is scaled based on the sample volume. This scaled hydrograph is then routed through the reservoir model using simple mod pulse routing, also known as level pool routing. The sampled starting stage is used, and for each time step, the inflow volume is compared to the user input stage storage discharge rating curve to determine the reservoir stage and reservoir discharge. The results of the simple routing procedure for our working example is shown in this plot. As you can see, the reservoir stage is shown in green, the inflow hydrograph is shown in blue, and the reservoir discharge is shown in red. In this plot, you can see the evidence of several of our randomly sampled variables, including the sampled starting stage of 724.4 feet, the scaled inflow hydrograph shape number 5, and the inflow volume of 375,000 CFS. The computed peak stage for our working example is 780.5 feet. Remember that the process used for our working example will be conducted 10,000 times for each realization. Ideally, the final stage frequency hazard curve should demonstrate a good fit to the empirical frequency distribution. The final stage frequency hazard curve produced from a full uncertainty RMCRFA simulation with at least 1,000 realizations provides a robust method to estimate the probability of events much less frequent than the observed record. To sum up, the inflow volume based stochastic simulation framework in RMCRFA produces reliable and accurate stage frequency hazard curves with an uncertainty interval and can produce comparable results to more complex precipitation based methods in a fraction of the computing time. Thank you for completing this module.